While many dragons are filled with hatred and want little to do with the world other than its valuables, or protective dragons who wish to work with those beneath them as guardians, there is a type of dragon that's just annoying to work with. A type of dragon that can simply be summed up as never being able to shut up. Brass dragons are quite social, but unlike other metallics who love to help others and give as much as they take, brass dragons just love to talk and very much do not listen in any regard. They can be summed up as gregarious, talkative, and in a few ways, quite selfish. But they will be satisfied talking with anyone and everyone, and in some ways, anything, to the point where they will go out of their way to learn every language that they can, purely to talk to as many people as possible. This is to the point where they become fluent in a language very quickly and become masters at learning new languages. Some can even learn a language within talking to someone for just an hour, something that must be magical as it's incredibly unbelievable. Oh, and they can also talk to animals as if they cast the speak with animals spell on them, but, but it's permanent, something that they don't even think about really. This is why most animals don't react to the presence of a breast dragon at all. In fact, it would look quite bizarre for those unaware to see a dragon just restingly talking to every animal around it, both herbivore and carnivore alike, as if they were a, a bizarre family. In fact, this is something you should really keep in mind when meeting them. See, they prefer to talk to things smaller and weaker than themselves. This is mostly because they do not like it when people walk away and leave them. This is to the point where they might try to indirectly intimidate people to stay and talk to them more. Perhaps they don't even realize they're doing so. But if you do leave, they might just follow you anyway. So it's really up to them if the conversation's truly over. This annoying nature is, is almost funny in a very sad way. See, they are one of the weakest types of dragons, to the point where a white dragon could probably beat them in a straight out fight. This leads to them going out and seeking allies as much as they can, but they get so distracted so quickly that they might forget why they started to talk to a person in the first place. Meaning they'll spend an entire day talking to someone and forgetting that a chromatic dragon is hunting them down. They are not stupid by any means, just incredibly forgetful, and in many ways they stand out a lot from the rest of Dragonkind. See, they don't like to fight at all, nor are they any good at it, so any conflict were to arise, they might just flat out flee as fast as they can. Most dragons view them as cowards for this reason, but I can hardly blame them, as they are known for being one of the weakest kinds of dragons, given that they live in the desert as well makes them the rival to the blue dragon, one of the strongest types of dragons. So they would probably be long dead if they actually held their ground when something came to attack them. Going back to the point about how much of outliers they are, and how unlike most dragons they are, this even extends into what they keep in their hordes. See, unlike almost every type of dragon, they don't keep the likes of stones and metals, especially valuable ones. They have absolutely no love for gems or coins. True, they might still have them and keep them, but they won't display them or keep them in a hoard. They'll just bury them in the sands not too far away, as their wealth might be needed, but they don't really want or care for it. Instead, their hoard desires are quite bizarre. For a start, they have the more normal loves that a lot of dragons would have, and that is for works of art. They love paintings, tapestries, and statues. Anything you could class as a work of art, really, and it's no surprise that they talk to them. Some of them even imagine themselves within the painted scenarios, which is a bizarre reason why they don't really like portraits, or pictures of them in any way. They prefer landscapes, and battles, and scenes like that, as the imagination is always stronger, and they love to imagine themselves in the scenario painted before them. Another strange love of theirs is well-crafted furniture. Wooden chairs, benches, and chests, lovely works of finely made organic furniture that they keep in neat piles and sometimes stack them on top of each other. It helps them look at them all at once and dust them commonly as they're quite caring of their furniture. A lot of them love to collect books too. It doesn't really matter what type of book, 
they just want sets to collect them. And they love to organise their collections and look after them in finely made wooden bookshelves. And something that they will always try to do is go out and travel vast distances to get signatures. They love finding authors of novels and tomes of history simply to collect their autographs and talk to them. And something I found that quite a lot of them tend to keep is houseplants of all forms and manners, from groups of wild and kept flowers to smaller bonsai trees. Well, I guess regular trees that are just smaller given the size comparison. Oh, and it's no surprise that they even talk to them and give them names, of course. They take good care of their trees, even more so of their works of art, which they also take immaculate care of. This is actually quite an impressive feat, given where most of them tend to live, as the majority of them live within the desert. If they are not pushed out by a rival, almost always being a blue dragon, there have been many brass dragon refugees fleeing the lands they love to have to settle at some place like a, a steppe instead. But they do love the desert, and they are so fond of them. They also try to keep their lairs very hidden, despite their gregarious nature, as they are known to be weak and non-confrontational, and blue dragons despise them for many reasons, so they often have to make sure that the blue dragons cannot find their home. But when they do manage to secure a lair, they affect the region around them magically, like all dragons do. For a start, those who need their assistance will find the tracks in the sand, appearing to lead them to safe shelters and water sources, and also leading them away from places the dragon wants to remain hidden. They are also fully aware of when someone enters these safe locations, but they know not who, so it's quite common for them to fly over and check out if they are friend or foe. If it is foe, they flee, and if it is friend, they talk their ear off, as always. Also, illusions of monsters might appear within the sand, hoping to scare those away from their lairs, but they have to be careful with this, not to accidentally lead those who want to find the dragon to them. But I will state that there is little, if ever, a reason to fight these types of dragons, other than the fact that you might just find them annoying. See, they have very little value in their hordes, and they're not that large when it comes to their bodies, so you're not going to get much value out of harvesting their corpse. They're also quite hard to find if they don't want to be seen in the first place, so if you truly want to be a sort of dragon hunter, I would advise that you just don't bother with them. But for the sake of completeness, I will note what their breath attack actually is, as it's quite unique in a few regards. See, they have two, but one is not what most think. See, they are known to have a fire breath that hurts its foes in the same way that fire does, but that's not exactly true, as what it really is is an extreme hot burst of gas that shoots forward and is as red as fire, which is why, at a quick glance, most people would think it's fire, but it's gas. But they also have a second gas that puts those of weaker body or will to sleep. Most use this just to get away from a fight should they need to, but I have actually heard that some talk to those that they put to sleep, and that's not too surprising, as some just put people to sleep by talking to them. I have probably fallen asleep with just hearing a brass dragon before. For many reasons, you're never going to find them alone, but they almost always have animals with them, as most people are just bored of their presence, but animals are fine with the company. The dragon cares little for who they talk to, nor do they actually want anyone to respond, they just want someone or something to talk with. This is why they even talk to inanimate objects, really anything they find. They don't spend too much time with other dragons, however. Of, of any kind, as they can't really tolerate other brass dragons, as the two of them usually just talk to each other, nor any other type of dragon, as they're powerful enough to just leave them if they don't want the conversation. So when they do actually have to have children, it's quite rare that these partnerships last long. They split up as soon as they need to and the children are cared for, so they make sure that they have quite a large cluster of eggs compared to most other dragons. Oh, and another fascinating thing about them raising their young, it should come as no surprise that they talk to their eggs for most of the time while they're looking after them. But the eggs can actually hear their parents, 
and they sometimes remember what they have said, or what's happening to the surroundings around them. And more interesting still is like all other dragon eggs, there are requirements for what it needs to hatch. But unlike most other dragons, which just need to be in the element the dragon can breathe, brass dragon eggs just simply need interaction. If you left them in a stash or a hoard as a display piece, they would just never hatch. But if you cared for it and talked to it, eventually it would. They care for their young properly for a few years, and then eventually make their leave as soon as they are classed as wormlings. Then the little ones go off into the world and be quite annoying, as they are one of the most annoying types of dragons, at the most annoying age, that being the equivalent of toddlers. In fact, I'd like to tell you a tale of one I cannot stand. A wormling who followed me all the time. His name is, and I kid you not, Kisk Vartin Malatonurial Taliskadar, something he loves to confuse people with constantly, and mock those who can't pronounce his name correctly. I met the little one at a late night. He was in a cage taken by an ogre, who planned to eat the little dragon. Looking back, I should have left him there, but the ogre was in the way of a magical sword I needed to help me kill an undead lich, more on that story another day, regardless. I quickly killed the ogre for its treasures, something that was quite easy as I had the dragon Zimuk with me at the time. But something I regretted doing to this day was I freed the little dragon afterwards. He does not shut up and follows me endlessly. He asks me all sorts of questions about who I am and what I try to do, and at first I found him quite cute, but of about after three years of going through this constant torture of him asking the same type of question that gives no real information over and over again, as well as ignoring me when I answer him, really got to my nerves. I tried shooing him away many a time, but he didn't really do the listening thing well, and continued to ask me stupid questions like a toddler asking why to everything. The thing that finally pushed my tolerance to the edge was the fact that I was healing late night, sleeping off a horrible injury in which my whole arm turned necrotic. He jumped onto my chest and asked me what my favourite type of nut was, and explained that I was wrong and it's actually hazelnuts because blah 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 blah, before I had even answered him. One night when I was annoyed far too much, I told him to find something for me in the forest, before me and Zamuk flew off. For about six years, I was free of the pest, before he found me again. Luckily, he was travelling with a party of adventurers, and one of them, a young tiefling girl, took quite a liking to him. So they didn't want to part ways, something I'm very fortunate of. He did sneak 30 hazelnuts into my backpack after the last time I met him, something I'm sure he thought was absolutely hilarious. Oh, and he does send me letters every now and again. These I don't really mind, but he does continue to send them regardless of if I respond or not, and quite commonly, about once or twice a week. But I know he's in good hands with that party. And through time, though annoying, he would become a grand dragon. I'd be glad to hear of his exploits. Second hand, of course, with beer in hand. Thank you for listening to my tales. I am the Ashspawn. Feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. It would really mean a lot to me. But, till next we meet, fellow traveller, have a good day.